Let's see how to find the lowest common ancestor in a binary search tree. First of all, let's define what the lowest common ancestor means. The lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in a binary tree is the node at the lowest level that has both the given nodes as descendants, where we treat a node as a descendant of itself. Let's see some examples. Here we have a simple binary tree. Let's see what is the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 5. So we start at root. Root has both 1 and 5 as descendants, so it's a candidate. But then at a lower level we have 2, which also has 1 and 5 as descendants. And then there is no more node at the lower level that has both 1 and 5 as descendants. So we say that 2 is the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 5. Let's see what is the lowest common ancestor of 2 and 5. So again, 6 is a possibility, but then at the lower level we have 2, and we consider a node a descendant of itself. So 2 is a descendant of itself, and then it also has 5 as a descendant. So in this case, 2 will be the lowest common ancestor of 2 and 5. Let's consider what is the lowest common ancestor of 3 and 5. So again, 6 is a possibility, then 2 is another possibility. But then on the lower level, we have 4, which has 3 and 5 as a descendant. So 4, in this case, is the lowest common ancestor of 3 and 5. Let's see one last example, the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 9. So in this case, 6 is the only node that has 1 and 9 as descendants. So 6 is the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 9. The lowest common ancestor is essentially the last node that is in common between the paths to the two nodes. For example, the path to node 1 is 6 to 1. And the path to 5 is 6 to 4, 5. The last node in common among the two is 2, which indeed is the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 5. If we consider then the path to 2, it's 6 and 2, and the path to 5 is 6, 2, 4, and 5. So the last node that is in common is 2. So this is the lowest common ancestor. And if we consider 3 and 5, the path to 3 is 6, 2, 4, 3. And the path to 5 is 6, 2, 4, 5. The last node in common among the two paths is 4. Here in particular, we're interested in finding the lowest common ancestor of two nodes in a binary search tree. We can take advantage of the binary search tree property, this is that for each node, everything in the left subtree is smaller and everything in the right subtree is larger to find the last node in common between the two paths. Assuming the two given nodes are actually in the tree, the idea is to start at root, so 6, and to check if two nodes have the value smaller than the value of root. If they do, this means that the left child of the current node is still in common in the two paths. So we move to the left and in case the value of the two nodes is larger than the value of the current node, then both the nodes are in the right subtree, so the right child is still in common in the paths to the two nodes. Let's see an example. So if we want to find the lowest common ancestor of 1 and 5, so we start at root and 1 and 5 are both smaller than the value of root. So they must both be in the left subtree. So we move to the left. And now 1 is smaller than 2, but 5 is larger than 2. So this is where the paths start to diverge. So the last node in common in the two paths is 2. So this is the lowest common ancestor. Let's consider 3 and 5. Both. 3 and 5 are smaller than 6, so we move to the left. 
both three and five are larger than two, so we move to the right. And now three is smaller than four and five is larger than four. So this is where they diverge. And so four is the lowest common ancestor. Let's actually implement this. So remember, the idea is to start at root, and if both nodes have a value smaller than the value of root, then they must be both in the left subtree. We recursively try to determine the lowest common ancestor in the left subtree. Else, if both nodes have a value larger than the value of root, then they must be both in the right subtree. So we recursively try to determine the lowest common ancestor in the right subtree. Otherwise, this is where the paths start to diverge, so the current node is the lowest common ancestor. So here we have a function called LCA, which stands for lowest common ancestor, and it takes the address to the root node and then the addresses to the two nodes of which we want to find the lowest common ancestor, and we return the lowest common ancestor. So we begin by storing the value of root in a variable so that it's less verbose to write. Remember, first we check if both the nodes have a value that is smaller than root. And in that case, we recursively call the function passing in the left child as root, and we return the result. Otherwise, if they're not both smaller, then we want to check if they're both larger. In that case, we recursively call the function passing in the right child of root, and we return the result. Otherwise, this is the last node in common in the two paths, so we want to just return it. And that's the whole function. Note that we don't need to worry about root being null, because we are assuming that n1 and n2 are in the tree. So in the initial call, root cannot be null. And in subsequent recursive calls, it cannot be null because we move to the left or right only after we've determined that both nodes are in the left or right subtree. Let's verify that this function works by running through an example. Let's say we want to find the lowest common ancestor of 3 and 5. So n1 is 3, n2 is 5. So we call our function lca passing as root 6. And then n1 is 3, and then 2 is 5. So what we do, we set value equal to root value. We do this so that we don't have to write the long root value, we just write val. So the first thing we do, we check, are the two values smaller than the value of root? So 3 and 5 are smaller than 6. So we call our function recursively passing in the left child of 6, which is 2. So we move to the left, not to the right, with 2. So we here back, we check, are they both smaller than the value of root? 3 and 5 are not smaller than 2. We check, are they both larger? 3 and 5 are both larger than 2, so this is true. So we call the function recursively passing in the right child of 2, which is 4. So we move to the right here. So we call the function with 4 this time. So this time we check, are they both smaller than 4? So 3 and 5 are not both smaller. Are they both larger? They are not both larger. So we just return 4. So we don't call neither to the left nor to the left, we just return 4. And 4 was the right of 2. So the right of 2 gets a 4, so it just returns it. And 2 was the left of 6. So the left of 6 just gets a 4, and it just returns it. 
And so the final output is 4, which indeed is the lowest common ancestor of 3 and 5. Let's see another quick example with uh, n1, 2, and n2, 5. So we call our function passing in root 6, then n1, 2, and n2, 5. We check, are they both smaller than the value of root? Yes, they are. So we move to the left. So we call the function recursively passing in the left of 6, which is 2. Then we check, are they both smaller than 2? This time, they are not both smaller than 2. We check, are they both larger? They are not both larger. So we just return root, which is 2. So we do not move neither to the left nor to the left. We just return 2. And 2 was the left of 6. Once the left of 6 is 2, it just returns it. So the final output is 2, which indeed is correct. Let's analyze the time complexity of this function. In the worst case, the two nodes are at the very bottom of the tree. And so there will be h calls where h is the height of the tree to find the lowest common ancestor. Since each function call will go in one level deeper in the tree, remember, we either move to the left or to the right. And since in each call we're doing a constant amount of work, the total work we're doing is all of age, so the time complexity is all of age. And if our tree is balanced, then age is simply log n. Let's now analyze the space complexity. Since this is a recursive function, so the call stack grows with each call. And in the worst case, there will be as many calls as the height of the tree. This happens when the two nodes are at the very bottom of the tree, which means that the space complexity is all of age. You can find the link to the code in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.